Hey guys, here we go again, Monday live. I uh, love all you guys, you know that. And uh, we got some cool things. We have some stuff that we didn't get to last week. Like we do, I now I'll get to you this week. And, uh, and a lot of, you know, questions out there and a couple of things we're gonna talk about. So uh, uh, let's get started right away. I wanna get as many questions as, as I can. And uh, let's go. Thank you, Sammy. Uh, first, we want to say welcome back, Anna. Yay! Yay Anna's Yay. back with us. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we have Mark Cole. Hey, Sammy, any stories about Elvis Presley? Um, Elvis Presley, I mean, he came from the South and he was, um, treat me like a fool, gabba gabba ghoul. <laughs> That's all I know about fucking Elvis What's Presley. What's gabba gabba ghoul for the people? Gabba ghoul is the shit you put in a sandwich, Italian, it's Italian thing, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's Tony Soprano's favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> we have Slay Tannic from last week. Hey, Sammy, have you heard about the Heineken kidnapping that happened in the Dutch underworld? If so, did you know any Dutch underworld people? The Heineken kidnapping? Yes. Was that a person or is that a beer? <laughs> Heineken. Is it Heineken beer? Possibly, maybe. Well, they that kidnapped sounds- a Heineken truck. I should make fun. I don't know who Heineken is. It might be a person, so I don't want to make fun. No, I've never heard anything about that. Okay. We have Dan Collins. What is the main difference between the New York Five Families and the Chicago Outfit? And do the Outfit have a seat on the commission? Some say Al and Big Tuna uh, did, always and respectfully, Dan Collins. Well, the difference is, you know, I remember way back, there was 21 states in the United States that had bosses that were on the commission. There was a, a, a raid in upstate New York. There was a meeting that bosses from all over the country were there a long time ago. Then it went down to 14 states. I remember it in my time. It was at seven states, the five families in New York, uh, Philadelphia, Angelo Bruno, uh, upstate uh, New York in Buffalo, and um, it might have been one more. But that's the commission in the United States makes the rules for Cosa Nostra in the United States, regardless what Italy says or does. We have our own, it's, you know, same thing, but we have a couple of different rules that we abide by um, and differ with Italy. As far as um, Chicago, I mean, I, I'm almost 100% sure that Al Capone did not have a seat on the commission. He was thrown out of New York, and he went there, and he started a family, and uh, it grew. Uh, Big Tuna. Big Tuna, I can't remember his actual name, was Anthony Accardo or something like that. And uh, he ain't got that nickname Big Tuna because... Uh, I think his girlfriend called him Big Tuna. <laughs> so I don't know how the fuck he got that name, but I think I heard something about that, that he was uh, yeah. a very well hung Big Tuna. So I don't know. Thank you. Okay, last one, Ronald Perez. Sammy, I'm from Miami and I am Cuban. Did you ever deal with the Jose Miguel battle and the Cuban mafia in New York? I know that Fat Tony dealt with him, but I wanted to know if you dealt with them. I didn't deal with them. I heard of uh, uh, that uh, group, that mafia. They they were they were more. It's more like they weren't a mafia. They were more like a movement, an underground movement to go back into Cuba to invade Cuba for freedom. They're more like freedom fighters. I guess they became a mafia. I heard Fat Tony had something to do with them. I never met them. They were tough guys. They were ready to go out and uh, fight, invade Cuba, and try to take it back. These are tough guys. These guys are going to go into combat, you know. So, but I, I never met them, but I heard they were tough guys, and they were mostly in Florida, a lot of them. So, uh, but I never met any of them. But I, I heard all good things about them. Perfect. 
All right, Anna, over to you, my dear. Happy Memorial Day, Sammy. I mean, soldier. Thank you. Thank you. I did a Memorial Day uh, video. I put it out for you guys who didn't see it. You know, Memorial Day is about not just veterans, it's Veterans Day. Memorial Day is for the people who died, the people we lost, our fathers, our grandfathers, fighting for freedom, and it's about them. It's the people who never came home, or they came home in a body bag. So I did a video, I go to the VA for certain medical stuff uh, from when I got out of prison, I still deal with them. I went to the VA with uh, Amina and we took some filming. I did a Memorial Day. I don't know if is it out. Mm -hmm. It's oh, out. It's out. Mm -hmm. So I, it's out, and uh, it's a big thing to me. Uh, you know, uh, I was in the military, so it is a big thing for me. We used to stop on the base. They would play the taps. You drive in the car, you stop, no matter where you are. You get out, you put your hand up, you salute. And until these taps are done for the, for the fallen heroes of this country. That's why we can go out and barbecue and have fun. So this is a day that we remember them and the people that we've lost. And uh, so I have a, a real, you know, memory of that. I have a space in my heart for that. And I do have a space in my heart for all veterans. We were brothers. We fought. Don't leave anybody behind. We had all of those traits. I was in during the Vietnam War. I didn't go to Vietnam. I trained for it. Um, uh, so I have a, a, an affection for them. I'm talking to a friend of mine, and I may even start a company, a water company. I was asked uh, by a friend, a good friend of mine, and uh, I was going to do it years ago. It, it fell apart. We didn't do it. He's back to me. He's talking to me about it. I may do it. And uh, the reason I'm going to do it is that I'm, I'm busy. I really don't want to do it. But the reason I'm going to do it is that some of the profits from the water that you buy will be like a military water are going to go to, you know, we're going to look into four or five really, really good organizations that take care of heroes that lost their legs, their arms, and all kinds of things like that. And we're going to donate part of the funds there. So it's not going to be a big money thing for me, but I, that's the reason if I do it, and I'm almost sure I will, uh, that's my reason for doing it. That's awesome, Sammy. Thank That's you. amazing. I was watching some videos this morning of the angel flights of when they fly back the body in, in the coffin and there's the U.S. flag over it and they're saluting and they're, they have like the, the fire department comes and they do like the water shooting over the th Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. If, this stuff, if stuff like that, I was in the military, I've seen a few things like that. If that stuff don't move you, you're not human. I, I don't know, you know. You know, they they come from all over the country, uh, people who went there, different races, black, white, Hispanic. When you're in the military, none of that don't matter. You know, your brothers, you're fighting for your lives, you're fighting for your country. And a lot of times you're fighting hard because you're fighting. People are shooting back at you, shooting missiles at you, tanks. So you're fighting for your life. Mm -hmm. You're fighting for each other, side by side. You think yeah. you care who you're in a foxhole with? whether he's black or white or Hispanic, no. There's people looking to kill you. Well, all that shit is gone. Right. So I, I like that about it too. So yeah. I, I have really, really good memories. You know, I did two years, I got drafted. When I went in, I said, I'll go in this draft because you had no choice and I'll get out. But when I got in, I, I, I grew to love it. I grew to love the people around me and uh, I stayed the whole two years. I got out with an honorable discharge. I had a lot of, you know, stupid things that went on that'll come out in my scripted show, all the crazy shit we had and things that happened. But I have, I'm very fond of uh, veterans. I got a soft spot for them. You know, Patrick Bet David and Brian Callen were, were talking about you and uh, on, on his podcast, and they were saying how you were so disciplined, so smart, and so business savvy um, that if that if you didn't do the mafia, you probably would have been 
some crazy high-ranking politician or like it's a Donald Trump almost. Not like a Donald Trump? Like, like uh, but you, <laughs> but you. I don't you. know if I want to be like a Donald <laughs> no. Trump. Maybe as wealthy as him. Right. Listen, I, li- I, I don't dislike Donald Trump. I'm not going to lie. He's a, a narcissist. I don't like the, some of the stuff, how he talks and brags. But um, I look at what he did. The country was in so much better shape. I know I was paying a dollar ninety-five. Let's call it two dollars a gallon. I'm paying four fucking five dollars a gallon now. There's problems everywhere. He was going to shut the border. You think Donald Trump would have allowed all these drugs coming through this border and not stopped it? You got another guest coming to you. You know he was a little nuts. He would have never allowed that. He would have shut that fucking down. He would. I think he would have bombed China for allowing this fentanyl to come to this country. 100,000 people died, and the numbers are a lot more than that now. Right. He would have never allowed that. I don't, God knows what he would have did. So, yeah. Thank you, Sammy. I'm going to jump into the super chats. Um, Wendell in the super chat. Um, hey, Sammy, who are you rooting for? Floyd Mayweather or John Gotti the third? Um, Their boxing match is coming up I, soon. I, I, I don't know how real of a fight that is I don't know if they're box is it a boxing match or a cage fight I think it's boxing oh it's boxing Floyd, yeah then I think Mayweather would win he's a great boxer he's a champ right he's 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 very talented now John Gotti's son uh John Gotti Jr. the third or some shit like that mm-hmm. I saw him he's a big tough kid he's got a good record mm-hmm. in a cage I think he would have you know a much easier time with uh, but in a boxing match he's going to have a real tough time with Floyd Mayweather oh, do circles around him Floyd Mayweather Ford who was that other guy the Irish guy um, um, you know what I'm talking right about yeah I know you're talking about it's right on the tip of my tongue who? It's right on the tip of my tongue. Oh, uh, he's real, real tough. I can't think of his name right now. Real tough. And Mayweather beat him. Um, I, Con- I, Conor, Mc- Conor, Conor Con- McGregor. Gregor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody helped me out. That, mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Um, getting so fucking old, it <laughs> fl- slips my mind. But, but Conor McGregor is a tremendous fucking fighter. I thought he was going to win because he is a tremendous fighter. Hits hard, but uh, Mayweather destroyed him. You can't take it away from Mayweather. People say he didn't fight a lot of you know big names. Well, he fought who was around in, at his time. Sure, there was bigger names before him, and maybe even after him. But he fought everybody who was in his time. So you can't say he wasn't a great fighter. I think he was a great fighter. I think he still is a great fighter. He keeps himself in shape. I don't know him personally. I think the, he's a great fighter. I, and I have a tremendous respect for fighters and the shape they got to stay in. So uh, I, I, my money's on him. Nice. Thank you, Sammy. Tube Lovers wants to know, did you know a Louis or Louis Bracchioli? What a name. Ha, ha, ha. Louis, we, I think we used to call him Louis Brajol. <laughs> And, uh, oh and boy, Bronchiato. Is it br- like a Bronchiato? Yeah, it sounds well, like that. Well, that's him. Louis Brejo, we used to call him. Brejo. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I did know him. And um, he was a good guy. You know, I, I didn't really do too much with him. But uh, he used to hang out. There was three of them, two or three of them that hung out together all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what we used to call him, Louis Brejo. Nice. I think he was from the Bronx or someplace. They would probably know better than me. I think he was from Bronx, somewhere like that. And uh, but he was a good guy. That's cool. Larry Lapper in the super chat. Hey Sammy, any made guys from the Rampers besides Papa and Alley Boy? And being so close, how did you guys end up in different families? Well, you know, when well, we broke up in the Rampers with Papa, and uh, he wasn't with the Rampers after a situation I did a video on it I'm not going to go through that whole thing but uh, when I went away and I got drafted I was 19 years old it was us against the world fuck the mafia fuck the government fuck everybody it was just us and uh, when I got out 
uh, I was 21. I did two years. And uh, a lot of guys had hooked up with the mafia. Now, Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, it's a fact. You know, there's books about it, everything. All kinds of bosses came out of Joe Colombo, Carmine Persico, and on and on and on. All kinds of guys came out of that neighborhood. Everybody seemed to have went with somebody. And I went with the Colombo family. My friend Tommy Spiro's uncle, Shorty Spiro, was with Carmine Persico. There was, you know, a war going on in there between uh, uh, the Gallows and them. And I signed up with them. Soon after I signed up with them, I did a piece of work, which was a murder, my first murder. And, uh, and then I hit the mattresses in that war with them. That's one of the wars I was in. I didn't really do too much. I actually was given a contract to kill Joe, crazy Joe Gallo. He was going out with a model, supermodel actress or whatever she was. And he found out he, he was going to this fancy hotel. And uh, he didn't know me, so I was young. And I was supposed to have long hair. Um, and I was mess my hair and wear a psychedelic T-shirt, make believe I'm stoned and slobber around a little bit. I had a gun on me. And when he gets out and walking to the door, the, the doorman would go over to him. I would shoot him in the head. Well, he did pull up, and uh, I saw him hit a mole on his face. I knew who he was. And, but he had this actress with him. The, the door guy, just like they said, ran over to him, kissing his ass a little bit. And, okay, I, was, I really didn't want to do this, but I said, I got to do it. And then all of a sudden, two, three cars pulled up, his bodyguards. They came out. It was cold. They had long coats. And I saw as they moved, they had either shotguns, rifles under there. They were all armed to the teeth. And I said to myself, the minute I shoot him, they're going to kill me. And I did do it. And uh, he got into the hotel. When I was walking, the guys, Shorty, Spiro, McIntosh, all them guys were behind me, but far away. When I was walking back, and I said, I'm going to be in so much trouble that I didn't do this. But instead, they gave me a hug and a kiss. They said, we know you got balls. We know you're a shooter. If you would have done that, they would have killed you. When we would have left, we would have said, this kid's insane to do that, knowing he's going to get slaughtered. And uh, they said, at least now we know you can use your head, too. So... Uh, I don't know how I got into the story. No, that's great. Um, in the movie The Irishman, Sebastian Maniscalco plays, the famous comedian Sebastian, plays Crazy Joe Gallo. How do you think he did as Crazy Joe? Well, they said the, the Irishman said he killed Jimmy Hoffa, and he also said he killed Joe Gallo. Now, I know for a fucking fact he did not kill Joe Gallo. I know the people who killed Crazy Joe Gallo. They were in a club. They got a message that he was in Umberto's uh, seafood place. Uh, what the hell is his name? Uh, there was a captain in the Genovese family who owned it. Um, and they got in touch with him. They says, you know, there's a war. He's going in your place. He gave them permission to go in and do it. So it wasn't the Irishman. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and uh, I don't think he, the Irishman, I'm, I'm almost sure he didn't kill. Uh, Hoffa? Hoffa? Jimmy Hoffa? He didn't kill Hoffa either. Yeah. So the movie, you know, was, it was good, but. How is Sebastian Maniscalco, the actor, how is his portrayal of Joe, of Joe Gallo? Did he do him justice? Is that how he really acted? I believe he was. He was very Gavunish. Mm -hmm. I mean, for you guys who are not Italian, a Gavun is like, uh, you know, a slobbering fucking jerk off that, you know, all that bullshit. So, yeah, he, he was very rough talking. Um, 
It's interesting. So, I mean, you know, I guess the guy played his part. I don't want to knock the guy. He might play me. What did, what did he look like, this guy? <laughs> he's funny. He's, he's from an Italian background. His, his stand-up is uh, about growing up old, with the old school dad. Like, go to work. I'm eight years old, dad. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> um, Mikhail in the Super Chat. Hey, Sammy, did you ever give somebody a nickname like yours, the Bull? Um, I, I really don't remember anybody uh, being called the Bull. You know, and I got it from a stupid fight as a kid. And I used to lie to people. I told them... Uh, uh, girls gave me that name. I wanted that to <laughs> circle around, <laughs> but it didn't work. But uh, there were there was a couple of guys named Bull, but I don't remember who they were. You know. Did you ever give anybody any nicknames like Alley Boy? How did Alley Boy get his nickname? My Gumbara he was my he was godfather to my daughter. So that in Italian he's my Gumbara. So I gave him Gumbada Alley Boy. And uh, a lot of people started calling him Gumbada Alley Boy. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't, he wasn't Gumbada with all those people. So that name kind of stuck on him when I would call him Gumbada Alley Boy. And even now, I think a lot of people who send me messages, we love stories about Gumbada Alley Boy. <laughs> they do, they really do. Yeah, he was, he was fucking great. There's so many stories about him, he was great. Uh, so so many stories and me and him I don't know we were just you know click and grok <laughs> we brought the fucking best out of each other and we brought the worst out of each other and all we had to do was look at each other that little smirk he would give me I knew this guy was going to get hit and I'm ready so it was it was crazy how you know we were on the same page you know, I, I got into a crash with him. We were on a getaway. I got arrested and everything. My nose was smashed. Uh, we got, I got out of the hospital. I got out on bail. Uh, so did he right away. And uh, we, I said, let's go out trunking again the next, the next day. I got out. And he says to me, turn to me, he says, call me Gumbada too. Gumbada. He said, your balls are too big. And I said, what are you talking about? He says, come on, bro, look at your T-shirt. And I looked down, I had bandages and everything, and I, the blood was still bleeding. It was coming through the bandage on my T-shirt. He says, if a cop sees us with that bandage on your face, blood on your T-shirt, they're going to stop us. We're going to get caught. Let's take a day off. Relax, bro. Get better first. I said, go by. We got lawyers. Bail bondsman, everybody's on our fucking back. But all right, you're right, let's go home. And we went home that night. But the following night, my nose stopped bleeding, then we went out again. But Kumbara, the, 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 we were really so close. It was crazy. I'll show you how close. He used to come home to my house, we used to play cards when I first got married to Debbie. And uh, we had no money at the beginning. We never had fucking food in the house. So here's how close we all were. Gumbada Alley Boy gets up, he opens up my refrigerator, is there anything to eat, Sammy? Uh, hardly anything, bro. I said, uh, there's a piece of pie or something that's been laying there for a fucking week and there's, you know, milk. I don't even know if the milk is good. So he yells to my wife, hey, Deb, she's watching in the living room, she's laying down watching TV. Why don't you get off your fucking ass and go fucking get some food? We, we have no food here. <laughs> That's how close we were. I'm laughing, we're all laughing. And Debbie, to my wife, tells him, why don't you fucking go out and do a, a, a normal stick-up so we can buy food? <laughs> so it, we, were, we were cool. He was cool with my wife, loved my wife. And I loved his wife, Joan. Uh, I know his kids. Um, so uh, we, we were tight. Goombat Alley Boy was great. That's awesome. Really great guy. Did Tato have a nickname? Tato? Mm-hmm. That was his nickname, Tato. Tato. You know, occasionally, Charlie Boy's son would make up the name Harry. Because it, was, it wasn't known to anybody. So if we were caught on tape, mm. so he'd say, listen, uh, Harry called up. 
And I would say, okay, let's go outside and talk. Or let's go in the backyard. He had a backyard. And we would go in the backyard. But, so we used the name Harry every once in a while, thinking that if there was a bug, we didn't want his name mentioned. But it didn't go to anybody else, just a few guys in the club. I think Big Louis Valerio was around then, and he knew we called him Harry. I think Louis called him Harry, too, every once in a while. So, uh, but other than that, no. It's interesting. Thank you, Sammy. Mad Cool, in the Super Chat, any chess recently, Sammy? Salute, Commander. Now, I hate to bring up the point about chess while the guy is doing the audio and taping and Ricardo <laughs> Ricardo and I've been breaking his ass don't so make him cry again Sammy to. come on uh, no, it's a no, holiday yeah yeah I'll, I'll back up no 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 chess going on <laughs> <laughs> it's okay he signed an NDA <laughs> there, he is. there he is Ricardo oh shh, shh, shh. he's coming he's coming <laughs> I'll turn it off Sammy <laughs> I know I know that's why I didn't, they were asking about uh, you and chess and everything yeah so. <laughs> That's funny. I'll beat you. I'll beat you one of these days. All right. <laughs> John Ball. Hey, John Ball. How are you? Any work, Sammy, that you did that you regret? That's my man, John Ball. Mm -hmm. uh, him and his father. I, I don't know if we got the father or Junior on the phone, but it doesn't matter. Both of them are great. Um, you know, of course, I I do regret I feel the pain of some of these hits with friends people I know it's part of the life when you break the rules you get killed it's like in the army bro you know people don't want to go out in Vietnam and kill fucking people in these towns they don't even know a lot of them it breaks their heart but you got to do what you got to do I did what I had to do um, I wish they wouldn't have broke the rules I wish it would have never happened um, so I regret them I can't I, I, there was nothing I could do and I can't change it um, I talk about them it's relieved there's bottled up stuff I have about it so I guess you can call it regrets yeah of course they're regrets I'm not uh, Roy DeMeo or gas pipe I'm I was a hit guy. I was really, really good and efficient. There's a lot of them I, I let them slide because they were with a girl or somebody and I didn't want to hurt an innocent person. But I, I, you know, I regret some of those things. But I'm efficient no matter what I do. I, whether it's construction, Hollywood, I'm pushing doors open. People are saying, Sam, you just started. You're doing great. You know, you, I try to be efficient. I try to be, I did artwork in prison. I can't draw a circle. Now all of a sudden I started drawing art and doing artwork. I got pretty good at it. Now, as soon as I used to screw up with the art, I used to rip it up and throw it away. And, and my friend Kevin and a few guys uh, would tell me, don't throw it away, it's not bad. When you fuck up, give us a holler, we'll come and help you out. And that's how I did my artwork. And. Uh, and I made less and less mistakes after a while. But that's how I am. That's the type of person I am. Uh, people on my team will tell you right now, I'm available 24 hours a day, seven days a fucking week, holidays, I don't give a shit. I don't work a 40 hour a week. I work a 60, 65 hour a week. Because Saturdays, Sundays, nothing means anything to me. I try to get as much done as possible. And, uh, so that's why I was in the mafia. I try to do the right thing, and whenever I had to do something, I try to do it right, including being a hit guy. You know, I know you, a lot of your stories on our thing are about the hits, but there's also a lot of stories of a lot of times you did save lives and you went to some serious sit-downs to go save somebody several times over. Yeah. You know, it's like a lot of people call me a rat. I did. I cooperated. But they don't know that in nine cases after I cooperated, I cooperated for the defense to get people out of prison against the government. And when the government came to me and they weren't too happy about that, I told them, listen, when I cooperated, you once told me, tell the truth. The 
that's all we and we, we, we don't care and I'm telling the truth I, about this guy it happens that it's not good for you but I'm telling the truth and I'm, I'm gonna be honest the government walked away most of them said Sammy then you're right if this is the truth then then do it we're not gonna fuck with you don't worry about it as long as you, you deal with the truth so uh, I didn't have any static but a lot of people don't know that uh, I'm, I have two of them right now you know that going on right mm-hmm. now uh, a guy's in jail for two different murders I knew the facts of those murders I wasn't involved but I made a document saying I wasn't involved but I've never even heard their name mentioned in these hits I don't think he's part of it I'm not saying for sure because I wasn't there but I'm almost positive and I'm doing it now I hope the guy gets out I'm doing it what's the guy from Jersey there Uh, Bobby Manna Bobby Manna I try to help him out you know I, I, I try my best as long as it's within the truth. In other words, you can't buy me to tell a lie, to get somebody out. You can't do anything. I won't do it. I'm not going back to jail to, to try and get somebody out. I'm not doing that either. So as long as it's based on the truth and it helps you, I don't have a problem doing it. Watch, I'll get 400 letters from prisons now. Sammy, you know I'm not guilty. Well, this is a great super chat to follow that, Sammy, from Ryan Brown. Happy Memorial Day, Sammy. Any thoughts on Vic Arena being denied compassionate release in 2021? He has dementia and thinks he is the president. I say let him out. Who is he a threat to? I agree with you a thousand percent. You know, there's a limit, and I've talked with the ADX Supermax Warden, and I talked with a lot of guys in law enforcement. I'm also doing a very, very strong pitch towards prison reform, and people, a good man uh, from the Warden, uh, uh, Bob Hood of uh, Supermax, we did a thing with him. We're working on it. It's going to be a two-part series. It's coming out on my uh, website, uh, ourthing.tv. And uh, it's in editing right now as I speak. And I'm working on talking to more people. Uh, I'm talking about ourthing.tv. I did the Michael interview. It's out there. A lot of people are getting great comments about it. I appreciate it. Um, I did uh, an interview with Alec Baldwin. A lot of people loved it. Same thing. A lot of great comments. I appreciate it. I did something with this guy, Dom Sakali, and that's being worked on right now, editing. Uh, he was a captain in the Bolano family, and I'm trying to do another one. I'm not going to... Talk, talk about it too much, but it's going to be, uh, I'm trying to bring in four or five heavyweights that we could have a sit down and we may do that. Uh, uh, I'll record it, edit it, and put it out on uh, our thing. So, you know, but I agree, he should, he should be out. If he thinks he's the president of the United States, um, you know, maybe they put Joe Biden in, so they figure if he could be the president, maybe he's he could talk, even though he's got all timers. It, it is a shame. Let him the fuck out. Let him die with his family. He's not going to do anything. He's up in age. He's got all timers. What more do you want? You want blood? When you, if you want blood. Don't tell me you're a fucking good guy, whether you're a judge, a prosecutor, whatever the fuck you are. When you want blood, don't call me fucking evil. If you're a judge or a prosecutor, you're just this fucking evil, maybe worse. I wouldn't do that. I would let him out. So I agree with you, pal. Amen, Sammy. Joey Fleming in the super chat. Hey, Sammy, I'm from Scranton, PA, and my grandpa worked for some guy here named Russell Buffalino and a few others. Any dealings with guys from Scranton? Not much, but uh, Buffalino, uh, Russell Buffalino, was a heavyweight, and if he worked for people like that, he was working with good, good heavyweight, good people. 
Awesome. So I just wanted to read a, um, a comment, Liz, you were talking about the Michael Francis uh, sit down you did for our thing TV. Uh, Ralph Fiola says, not a question, but a compliment. The table in the back is the best thing I've seen in decades. This was fucking beautiful. Great fucking show. And it's the best five bucks I spent since 1988. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And we put a lot, a lot of time and effort into it. Uh, you know, and it, it gets rid of all the riffraff, the bullshit that, you know, me and Michael Frenchies don't uh, 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 agree on things or we don't like each other. We do like each other. We respect each other's positions in the mafia and now out of the mafia. Um, he's a great guy. Um, we're doing a few things with him right now. Um, pretty solid guy. I know for a fact, I know his family, I, when I did the uh, uh, in the United States of America, whatever mm -hmm. that did, mm -hmm. Patrick, I met his wife, his daughter, he's got great family, he's a great family man, father, um, so uh, yeah, I, I enjoy doing it, and I'm going to do more of those table in the back, that's what the warden is the table in the back. There's going to be quite a few of them. I did one with uh, Dominic Sicali. I think you're going to love this one, too. And I'm working on I'm trying to put together a big one where I bring in four or five heavyweight mobsters all at the same time with me. And we sit, we talk, we go over the economy and what's going on in the country and the old days, and I think you'll love this too, if I could get it together. So these things are not that easy to get together, and they're very costly to do. If you notice you saw it, you know I, I put some money into that and some effort into that. So it's the money don't move me as much as doing quality work. I'm willing to pay the money. I'm, I don't drive around. I was never a fancy guy. I don't give a shit too much about jewelry, clothes, cars, bullshit. I don't drink much. Uh, I don't take drugs. I'm not a womanizer. I'm not giving money to broads. And so I, I, this is how I spend my money. I enjoy spending my money taking care of some people and putting on good entertainment and a little less in my pocket. So I, I, I appreciate you saying things like that. Yeah, the next release, the exclusive interview is going to be with Michael Vecchioni, and he had some crazy stories you guys were talking about. Unbelievable. Oh. Wait till you hear this. This guy was a heavyweight prosecutor. He was heavyweight in organized crime. He was the guy who debriefed uh, gas pipe, and he knows everything about gas pipe. I did a, a, an interview with him, and that's coming out next Mm -hmm. In June. In June. Mm -hmm. In June, that interview is going to come out table in the back as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had some crazy stories about the body snatchers and FDA oh recall. Oh my God, he blew he blew me away with stuff with stuff and uh, I you know stuff I never even realized uh, you know stuff I knew about gas pipe and everything, but stuff he blew me away with stuff. The corruption, the internal corruption. The internal in the corruption, mm -hmm. and he wants to help me with the warden to do prison reform. So I'm trying to get heavyweights in. Um, what's her name again? Candace Owens. Candace Owens. I'm going to reach out to you again, Candace. You, you, this is about, you know, I want to meet with you. I want to talk with you. I want you to join me and help me with prison reform. We have heavyweight people, wardens, prosecutors. Um, you're a smart woman. You're dedicated. I think the world to you. And I would love to have you in, in that part of what I'm doing. Richard C. just commented, Sammy is a national treasure. Great guy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bro. He is. That's true. You're a national treasure, Sammy. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, Blosh Den, do you still love horses, Sammy? You know, I, 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 haven't had, I haven't been around horses for a very long time. But I do love them. They're beautiful animals. It's like a dog. They really get affection for you. They could be a little nasty until they're gelded. Sometimes they'll bite. Uh, they kick. But when you get to know them, they're, they're like a dog. They'll come over to you. They love people. You know, if, as long as you treat them right. 
uh, and I, I love them. They're, they're beautiful animals. They're so powerful, and uh, they, they, they exude that kind of power, strength, and, they, and, and they're lovable. How many horses did you have on your horse farm? Well, I had horses. I had race horses. I bought trotters. Uh, I had about four of them at one point, and I had a horse for my daughter, my son, you know, and my uh, my niece had a, a pony. So I had about seven, eight, ten horses. Wow. Yeah. So you would break them at the farm, or when when do you break a horse? We would break them at the farm. I, when you buy a yearling, you know, trotter is a thing that goes behind the gate and a car is driving and the car and the gate go away and the horses take off and run and there's a guy sitting on the back of them holding the that's a trotter or a pacer and uh so when you bought a yearling we would take them on the farm i had a track on the farm we had a car with the gate so we would take one horse that was already broken in and put him behind the gate and the new one which a yearling's a year old so you get them out as a year, you start tra- breaking them in about a year and a half, and you put them, his nose or her nose, against the rail. And she don't panic right away. They do, but they get used to it because you, they see the other horses relaxed, and it relaxes the horse. And then you do it over and over again, different things, even putting the, the equipment on them. They're very uppity about it. They, they, you know, they were just born. They never had that stuff put on them. So breaking them in was a trip. You know, at one time I had told the trainer, had a trainer who lived on the farm with us. I said, let me try to ride it. So he said, Sammy, you got to go counterclockwise. A race is, you know, clockwise. And they know that and they take off. When you go counterclockwise, you're training. So they're relaxed and they just, you, you're working them out for muscle and stuff like that. So I said, don't worry about it. I, I'll take care, we'll go, I'll go counterclockwise. Don't worry about it. So he got on the, the rail, there's like a, a, a pole on both sides. He sat on the pole and he said, go slow. So I went slow. I felt good about it. And I started going faster. And he said, no, no, you can't. And I pushed him off the rail. <laughs> I took off with the horse. I bought the fucking thing. It's my horse. Don't tell me I can't. So anyway, when we got, I went around, and uh, he's waving to me. And then I turn around, and he says, no, no, don't come this way. <laughs> when I tell you, when I did fully turn the horse around, that thing took off like, it, like I'd had a jet engine up his ass. I mean, it was great. I had fun. I didn't get hurt. I made a cart that kids could sit in. And I would only jog for jogging, you know, so it's not too crazy. And the kids would sit in the cart, and uh, I, I would sit with all the trainer, and we would go around with the thing. After a while, my son and my daughter were able to sit in the cart by themselves and go around. But we were there to, to, to run in front because if a horse sees you running like this in front of him, he'll veer off a little bit, but he'll slow down and stop. So we were, I had three, four guys, plus the trainer and me. So just in case the horse took off. And, uh, but I loved that. I really loved that farm life. It was, I was in the mafia at that time. Getting away from the mafia and going to the farm, my wife loved it. I, oh, she's an animal lover. And animals react to her right away. Dogs, I don't care what it is. The horses too, when she would walk in the barn, you'd hear them neighing, they'd come up to her, putting their face out, then she gives them an apple or whatever she's gonna give them. And it was great. I wound up losing the farm. Uh, I got pinched and I, got, I was losing for tax evasion and everything, I wound up losing the farm. It broke our heart, all of us. It was either losing the farm or losing the house I was living in in Staten Island. So I, I lost the farm. But I, I loved the horses. A lot of my friends, you know, had horses, played around with horses. I, even as a kid, I used to go horseback riding in, uh, in uh, I forgot what they call it, Ships at Bay, or whatever the fuck it was, you were able to go rent horses and go out and ride them. 
when my family lived in Long Island, I had a horse. So uh, I like horses. That's Christ beautiful, Sammy. Christina said something about Big Red. That's Holmes' uh, daughter? Yeah. Christina yeah. Holmes. She said she was four. She remembers. Yeah. That yeah. was one of your when horses? I had a horse. They called him Big Red. The horse was magnificent. Well, a big, really powerful, really beautiful red skin, the, the mane and everything. And I had that horse for a while, and I had him. And here's Holmes' daughter saying she remembered the horse's name and everything. <laughs> That's, That's so great. cool. That's great. Yeah, that, that was our horse. Then I sold him to a friend of mine, and uh, he had him for a while. And I don't know what happened. That's amazing. What, what amazing memories, Sammy. That's really cool. Yeah, those, those are amazing memories. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're in the past. I had some good times. I really did. Amen. Algato in the super chat. Sammy Salute, any advice on today's women? Should I do the door test? The Mario test. So in Bronx Tale, remember the test was if she reaches, you put her in the car, if she reaches over to unlock your side, she's a keeper. If she doesn't, you kick her out of the car. I'm <laughs> just kidding. She's going to lock the door? <laughs> no, she's going to unlock it for you, for you to get in. Then she's a keeper. No. <laughs> what do we do uh, with the women today? How do you know they're good? Like, we're crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, women are cool. They always were. You know, I always found I would joke with my... It wasn't a joke with my friends. It became a joke. When I would go with a woman, I would tell them... Uh, I don't love you. Uh, I want to have sex with you. I, I want to have fun with you. And uh, so the woman would like look a little stunned at first. And then they'd say, you want to know something? At least you're honest. I've been bullshitted eight million times. This guy loves me. This guy loves me. As soon as they get laid, they don't, they don't love you no more. And uh, come on, let's go have fun. So I would tell my friends, I said, that's, and they said, wow, that works. I said, it's not a scam. <laughs> it's, it's, I told the truth. And they come and go. I mean, they're both, listen, women are not stupid. They've been bullshitted so many fucking times in their life. And um, you'll know when she's a keeper. She'll know when you're a keeper. When she understands that you're a keeper, you'll see how good she is. You, I don't know about locks and unlocks, but women are just as smart, if not smarter than us, because they've been bullshitted over and over again. So they're not fools. Bullshit them sooner or later. They're going to see it. They heard it. And uh, they're not going to want you. It's not you picking a keeper. It's, it's two ways. If she don't like you or love you, you could call her a keeper. You could call her whatever you want. She's not staying. So if she wants to stay and you want it to stay and both of you tell the truth, love is a beautiful thing. I mean, I've had it a couple of times in my life. Um, and there's a lot of people I love in different ways. Uh, but I've found it a couple of times and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I've had it. I've lost it. Um, but it's a beautiful thing. And uh, the, and what happens even when you lose it, um, my wife, I'm divorced. I still love her. And, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have a bad argument. There's not a bad bone in my body about her or vice versa. I was in prison. She always visited. She sent cards, letters, and she was there every single fucking time when I got out. And I went in and came out a couple of times in my life. So it's what you have with a person, and it's just the opposite of sex, whether it's a woman, it's, it's a very important thing. Um, I know women that I was friendly with, uh, Prudy's daughter Barbara, Tony Ann, uh, Angel, a friend of mine, she grew up in a neighborhood with us, all kinds of women. They're good people and are still good people. I still have relationships with them, friendships. And uh, so uh, I don't know about 
all those little gadgets and tricks. I'm not too sure. I'm not too good at that stuff. <laughs> well, is it true that men, when they look at a woman and they start to date her and talk to her, they know right away whether she's wife material or just girlfriend, maybe dates you for a little bit material? I, I, don't, I don't know if you know right away. I, I know as a man, we're dogs. I don't give a shit about you being a good mother or a good wife or a good anything. I mean, if I think you're a good fuck, oh my I want to. I want to be. I want to be with you. So I mean, I think it starts like that. Again, being honest, I think it starts like that. She's pretty. She's got a great body. But you know, in time, she has all these other qualities, and that surpasses that first thought. And now she becomes. A keeper. Now you want to cuddle with her. It's not even sex. You're cuddling with her. She's like fitting in with you. You have a different feeling. Love and uh, a sexual attraction are two different things. So I think the first thing that we look for is a sexual attraction. And God gives women the same thing. They look at a man. They, they think, they don't even think it's ingrained in them of how the children would be born. Their mate, they, they, we're, we're geared like animals, believe it or not. We have these, we're nurtured for these things. So it, without thinking about it, it just happens. You know, I, there's a part in the movie and I was do, wanted to do it, I was fooling around with you, when uh, there's a beautiful woman opposite me and she says, why do you want to be with me? You're married. And again, being a guy, I say, well, you know, can we be friends? And she looks at me square in the eyes and with a beautiful, beautiful little smile and says, we're not going to be friends. Which kills me because she knocks me over. We're going to be lovers. So that truthful bond between people. Now, she might be a keeper because you know, having that bond, it's, it's beyond, you know, she sees it, she's telling you. And if you're a real man, you'll know it and you understand it and you're saying she's right. But that statement now attracted me even more. Wow. We're not going to be friends. So little things like that could attract you and keep you glued to a person. And then you could say, after little cuddling, walking, stupid things, and then all of a sudden while you're walking, you're saying, you're not even thinking of sex for that minute. And you're saying, you're looking at her, and you're saying, wow, she's a keeper. So it's not just the sex, it's, it's a multitude of different things that happen. I'm starting to sound like a fucking psychiatrist or something. Seriously, that, um, that scene is from Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. With Leonardo DiCaprio and Margot Absol Robbie. We're Absolutely. not going to be friends to what he... scene, but yeah, it's because great. it's an honest, truthful scene between a man and a woman. And that's what I fell in love with that scene. There's a great scene. There's a lot yeah. of great scenes in yeah. that movie. <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street. Um, Jay Marie in the super chat. Boss, I grew up on the streets, been in gangs and sold drugs, met with cartels and even did a little work. It's an honor to be able to hang out with you. As a youngster, I looked up to you guys. Stay healthy. I love that. So I hope you're away from all of that uh, bullshit now. Is that a guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I hope you're away from all of that. Listen, all of that stuff, it is great, and, and there's a lot of great people and, and gangs in a lot of places. It's hard to believe that there are, but there are. But um, the, the, the bottom line is a lot of years of prison or or you're going to lose your life, or your friends are going to lose their lives. You know, it was good that you went through it, you get street experience, it's priceless. 
it's that it's I I I equate it to a, a Harvard degree, but it's the street. It's wisdom, and it goes to school and there's classes and they talk about becoming a psychologist and stuff and there's books and stuff. I think Anna is working with me and for me for quite a while now and she has a, a whole different view from the books. And this is beautiful because her book knowledge and talking to you guys and me and the street and all these crime stories, she's learning firsthand a whole nother different way. So now when you're gonna put those two teachings together, I hope I don't lose her, but she's gonna be a heavyweight psychologist or psychiatrist someday, a heavyweight. And that's what you need. You need you need that bumps and bruises and bangs and you know tough lives and bad husbands or bad wives or bad family members or whatever. You need all of that, you know. And I, I constantly say, you know, when you get banged around, the strong get stronger, the weak get weaker. So, you know, stay strong. And if you get banged around, you're strong, get stronger, go on with your life in a whole bunch of different ways. Thank you, Sammy. We have about three to five minutes left, and Betty Ann Tavano has made an appearance. Hey, girl. She says, woof, 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 and there's like a thousand hearts in this message. I, yeah. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> Hey girl, I did a video and you sent me something. I appreciate that. I was so confused. I said, how do they do that? I mean, I did a short and uh, you sent me a message. I appreciate it so much and uh, you're great. Awesome. Um, Tarek A, salute Mr. Sammy. I wanted to know what happened to Scapacci from the Genovese after your sit down with Chin. Did he leave the life and thank you for everything? Scapacci, uh, Chin never heard him and they chased him just like that sit down. Uh, he lived up to his word. I lived up to mine. Mm -hmm. I didn't hurt the people and he didn't hurt him. Um, I was a beautiful meeting and Scapacci was chased. I don't think he ever got made. Uh, I think he might be still alive. I knew his brothers, you know, very, very well. His sister was very, very close with my wife and uh, they were very, very good friends. I believe his, the sister died. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, 100%, but I, I think uh, my wife told me her name was Celeste, that she passed away. I know the brother Tommy passed away. Um, you know, he got, he got cancer when I was on the street. And, you know, he used to come to my club and everything like that. And then he got really sick and he couldn't come around. And uh, I got in touch with him, and not Robert, but the other, another brother. And I said, he, he can't come out of the house? And no, Sammy, he's not really not well. So I said, give me his number, let me give him a holler. So I call him, Tommy, how you doing? This and that. I says, you don't want to play cards with Moise? He said, I would love to, he says, but, you know, I'm like almost bedridden, I am in the house, I get nauseous from chemos and all kinds of shit they give me. So I said, if I come over with a few guys and we play cards, could you do it? And he said, yes. He says, I, I would love that you would do that. I brought five guys, we all played cards in his house and he loved it. He grabbed me, hugged me, kissed me, he just did not thank me. So we went there a couple of times with him and then he got real sick and, uh, and then he passed on. Mm. So amazing Sammy thank you one last question hi Sammy I adore listening to your stories I love you bro Michael Francis once told a story when he entered the basement on a sit down with the boss and several capos and the situation was so tense he thought he would never get out alive have you ever been in a situation like this when you thought you were going to get hit oh absolutely 
I had a, a, a sit down. I raised my hands to a friend of ours, a made guy, Louis De Bono. Um, his captain, Patsy Conti, went to the boss and asked for my life. Frankie DeChico told me about it. He said, Sammy, this is serious. They're going to pick you up in a diner. They're going to bring you to a house in a basement. They, they, they're making me have a gun. Tommy Blonde, he's going to have a gun. If you lose this decision, you're going to go. He said, lie. Tell him he's a lie. Tell him you didn't raise your hands. Tell him you didn't do this. Tell him that. I said, all right, I think you're right. I did this video a while ago, so I don't know if I should do the entire thing, but I started it a little bit. So I went to it, and Louis de Bono was on the other end of the table with a cigar, fat-ass motherfucker, with his legs crossed, with a cigar hanging out of his mouth, smirking at me, knew he had me. My skipper was there, Tato was there, Paul was there, Neil was there, Tommy Bellotti, Frankie De Chico, and... Uh, Paul was giving me a little speech. I, I understand the life, raising your hands to a friend of ours is the death penalty. And blah, 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 blah. He went on and on and on with his speech. And he said, that's what the accusation and that's what they're here for. Did you raise your hands to a friend of ours? And I looked at Louis and he just was almost in a smile, puffing away in a cigar probably knew I had a lie. I don't know what the fuck reason I did it, but I said, Paul, I never raised my hands to a friend of ours. I never disrespected a friend of ours. This fat cocksucker was robbing me. Then he brought in lawyers and accountants in a room with me on a sit-down, and they were trying to bury me in paperwork. I, my brother-in-law was there. I made him, the lawyers and the accountants get out of the room, and I banged him from one fucking wall to the other. I did raise my hands. Frankie DeChico went like this, put his hands on his head and put his head down. I told Frankie, because I wasn't crazy about Tommy, if it's, it's got to be, you do it. You're my friend. You kill me. Paul was stunned. Didn't say a fucking word. Neil Delacroach stood up. And he said, Paul, I need to talk. He said, this fat fuck has been robbing friends of ours and lying to us forever. We're going to kill Sammy right now. This is going to be on our record. We killed a friend of ours who refused to lie. That's the number one rule with us, too. You never to lie to this commission, to this, to this uh, administration. And he didn't lie. And I believe that he tried to rob Sammy and pulled this kind of bullshit with him. And Sammy bounced him around the fucking room. And we're going to have it on our record that we killed the good man for a piece of shit. Paul told Neil, calm down, Neil, calm down. He says, I'm going to make an exception here today to me. He said, I'm going to give you a pass. If you ever raise your hands to a friend of ours again, no matter what the fuck it is, you'll die give you that my promise he said now I want you to shake his hand and tell me that you will not hurt him and you Louis de Bone I want you to shake his hand and tell me that you're not going to hurt Sammy I said hurt me Paul this mutt motherfucker give him the order to kill me right now and give him a gun he don't have the fucking balls. He's a swindler, lying prick. He don't have the balls he was born with. Give him a fucking order and give him the fucking gun. I think it got real. Tato told me, Sammy, 
enough. It ended. Long story short, that went out everywhere in the Gambino family. John Gotti, everybody talked about what the fuck happened in that sit down. So did I think I was gonna die? Yes. When I went under Johnny Key's hit, did I think I was gonna die? Yes. When I did the hit with uh, the Plaza Suite with Frank Fiala, I didn't, the boss wouldn't talk to me for 19 days. He was saying that I did an off the record hit, which is the death penalty. Did I think I would get killed? Yes. So there's many, many times that that happened to me. Um, well, that's three uh, major ones that I could tell you about. And there's other times that things that I thought I might be killed for, but didn't even come close. So that's what that life is. You live by the gun, you die by the gun, you live by their rules, or you die by their rules. That's the life. I want Frankie, who's my fucking friend, to kill me, not Tommy Bellotti. I want my friend to kill me. We're samurais. I know that's a movie with Japanese people, but we're samurais. We have to live with honor or die with honor. Johnny Keys taught me cause an also like I've never ever understood. It's gonna be a movie. He was a samurai. He knew he lost on the battlefield. I was with him in the fucking car for 12 fucking hours in a, in a, in a van. We became friends. He showed me goes an also like I've never seen and I fell in love with him. When I told that to Paul, Paul said, what? What did you just say? I said, I fell in love with him. He's the epitome of our life. I killed last night the epitome of our life. I feel dirty. Paul said, every underboss, every boss, every underboss and every gunslinger of the, every family in the commission is gonna know we did it, you did it. They know you got the hit. Nicky is gonna win the war because of you. You should be on cloud nine. I said, no disrespect, Paul, I don't give a fuck what they think. I know how I feel about it. So it goes on Australia is a weird place in a way. You need to understand it. I'm dying to do the history of the mafia. I'm starting working on it. Before I die, I know you guys love my podcast, but I want to do the history of the mafia with heavyweights. From when it started, started in Sicily, only Sicily. Why did it start? Where did it go? I want to explain it. I want this country to understand what the mafia really, really is, inside and out, the good, the bad, and the ugly of it. In our studies, Anna's doing some studies in, right, right from the schools and universities. It was started as a good, beautiful thing to help the people. There was people who invaded Sicily. They defended men and women and children. That's what goes on how it started. It went through wars. It went through religious things with the church. So many things. It had deals with the government, the CIA. The story is unfucking believable. When I tell this story, I don't want to say some of the people because I don't want to use their name. I don't, I don't have their permission yet. But when I tell this story, I'm going to tell it with love and passion. And I'm not going to leave any of the ugly stuff out. You're going to hear it all. If you love the fucking podcast, I think you're going to go crazy over this. And it's going to be on OurThing.TV. When I started, I don't know, I don't know how long it will take to go from start to present time, to today. 
And I hope if I drop dead in between, that somebody just keeps it going, even after I'm dead. And I want the country and the world to understand Goza Nostra, the real Goza Nostra. Yeah, we had psychopaths in it. Some people call me a psychopath or whatever you want to call it. I'm not. I never was. Um, but uh, I don't know why I'm getting carried away. No, that was amazing. Yeah. I didn't want to stop you. That's phenomenal. All right, so... Um, so, 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 guys, Sammy does see all your messages and all the concerns about the website. He is working out all the kinks with Wix. Um, he's actually having Wix create a new coding for some of the things he wants specifically tailored um, for his website to make it easier for you guys. Um, so he's working on that right now. Um, but thank you for all your feedback. I know, Sammy, you worked all weekend getting back to people yourself, actually. Yeah, on my, on my phone. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did a crazy thing. I, I was sitting back finally took a break had a cigar a cup of coffee and I said I texted people and I said uh, did you join our thing dot TV yet and I hit paste and I just went right down the line <laughs> one person after the other after the other and I did about 60 70 of them 80 of them whatever I did and uh I mean, it's sitting here. When she came in, I said, there was blue dots. Now, if somebody's having trouble to getting in, I don't know how to tell them to get in. I'm tech, I'm dead. So I just left all the dots. So I said, I mean, come here. Look at all these blue dots. She said, what the <laughs> hell is that? <laughs> so now, I mean, it was answering each one and she's the better, better one to tell them how to get in or what to do and some of them had nothing to do with that question they, they asked other things and I answered it and I told her what to say because I don't really make anybody answer my stuff I, I, I don't have anybody I almost, I'm almost at a point where I'm I may, I may have to I guess someday I'm getting hundreds of messages a day uh, and, and a, a lot of you guys you know, there's a way you can make a phone call. I don't answer it. I don't answer that phone. You could send me a text, and I may, I may get 90%. I'll get back to you. I don't because once I start doing that, imagine my phone every fucking three seconds ringing. I, I, I can't answer the phones. If you don't have my personal number, I'm not answering that number. So. I don't mean any disrespect by it. I just can't. It's uh, it's too much. So leave a text if it's something important and I think I can help you or, I, or whatever. I'll get back to you. I'll text back to you. And if I think it's really important, I'll give you my fucking number and we could talk. But uh, I can't answer those phone phone calls and um, everything else. Uh, is good. Mm -hmm. Can everybody press the like right now? How many likes are we at, Ricardo? We Before Sammy starts singing. <laughs> uh, we are at 375. Oh, come on. 375? And we have 973 people. Come on, guys. Let's go. Everybody hit the like. We got one last question from Ryan Brown. Thank you for your time, Sammy. I know it's getting a little over the time. Um, Sammy, who was made with you at your ceremony? When I got made, uh, there was 10 of us. The books were closed for years. When they reopened the books in 1975, um, they said, let's reopen it. It was closed for 20 years. Um, and we'll make 10 people in a batch. And, and then they started, like in 76, they did it again. And there was me, Tato's son, Charlie Boy. Um, there was guys, a couple guys I didn't even know. Um, I can't even remember, but most of the guys, like to me it was me and Charlie Boy, you know. And uh, I was a little, a little shocked that day. I mean, it was one of the biggest days of my life, most important days of my life. I knew what the mafia was. I, I looked up at these people like they were God. 
and now I'm going to become one of them that day, and I knew it. Uh, so, I mean, it was a day like, you know, get when I got married, or when my wife gave birth to my daughter and then my son, I'll put it in that category. It was an amazing, amazing day for me. I felt so honored that these people sitting around this table were legend, legends, and I was gonna become one of them that day. And I took the oath, and uh, I was completely blown away. And the rest is history? Hmm? The rest is history. And the rest is history. <laughs> here I am sitting on my ass over here. <laughs> Sipping a, a Coca-Cola. Uh, having a Coca-Cola. A Coke and a smile, baby. Usually I have a, a cup of coffee, but I wanted something cold, so. Salud. Cheers. Awesome. How's our likes going, Ricardo? Uh, let me refresh. 470 last time I heard. Ooh, jump 200. Thank you, guys. 485. 485. Thank you, guys. Well, we you know, after we're gone, you could keep pressing like and keep press like. press the subscribe. The subscribe button's really important too. Um, and uh, I'm getting the signal. You know what the fuck this is? Not, not that I'm losing <laughs> this my. This is like mind. party on not down. That I'm losing my mind. They're telling me wind it up. I'm, I'm overboard already. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stay another an hour and a half. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Which one? The, uh, the uh, Aguga, whatever the fuck is name. <laughs> What's the, <laughs> who's the Spanish guy? There's a lot of them, Sam. Yeah. Spanish guy. Is he a comedian? I, is think he, he, I think he's the one with the, with the, a keeper. The what? A keeper. A keeper? A keeper. A keeper. With the girl. You know it's a keeper. If she oh, the plug she Jay Marie, the, who you gave that? Who? You're talking about the Bronx Tale? No, didn't you read me a message just a little bit ago? Yeah, with the when you when you re, when you pull the lock when you pull the lock if she reaches over the car seat to open your unlock your door so you can get in she's a keeper she's a wife material. Oh. It's from the Bronx Tale. Oh, is that what that? <laughs> yeah, was? yeah. I remember he was dating the black girl and they were like, "Don't go out with her." Oh no, I don't, I don't know. I thought it was the the, uh, the a Mexican thing. I'm a Mexican thing, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. All right. Adios, motherfuckers. And stay safe. Stay strong. Always. And come on to the website. I'm, we're going to do a lot of big things. Really, I want to talk about the economy, the country. I'm unleashed on that. And I'm going to talk about everything. I see what's going on in this country. I can't say it in a lot of channels and a lot of places. And I'll get shut down. But well, I can, you know, you're not going to shut me up on my own channel. So we're going we're to have a lot of fun uh, things. You know, let, let me say one more thing. I'm going to hang in for a few seconds more. Because I heard a thing the other day. I seen a woman outside of targets she had a bullhorn and uh, she was complaining that they were selling sex toys and near the children's section and some of the kids clothes from birth to four five six years old or whatever it is they had you know all uh, technicolor things clothes all kinds of weird things. A front, a patch, a th weird, weird shit. So she was talking about it. So they must have came out. They might have got in touch with the headquarters and said, uh, you know, th this is going to be a problem. And they took it and put it to the back of the store. Here's what irks me about that. Why is she out there? She was with one or two other people, maybe her friends. He's the only one out there with a bullhorn and a sign. Why wasn't there two, three hundred, four hundred people saying, if this is what you're going to do, then fuck you and your store. We're not shopping here. 
Where are the people? What are we doing? What are we allowing what they're doing to our children? If not ourselves, our children, our grandchildren. Target, Target stock actually, everybody's been boycotting it. I think they tanked like $9 billion in revenue. Um, the, the, the stuff that they had in the children's section was the, the um, demonic Baphomet head, because it's like a Luciferian de demon, and it's in the kids' section. They're pins, they're this, they're that. It was designed by an actual like Satan worshiper. The guy's a Satan worshiper, and it's, it's um, really just innuendo to hate cisgendered people, so straight people, heterosexual people, male, female, but it's in the kids' section, and they're pink and purple, and Yeah, yeah, I, I saw it, I, I, and I'm telling you what annoyed me is that, mm -hmm. good, I hope they lost fucking $10 billion and, and on a beer can. Now I saw a commercial with Ford truck, two trucks racing. They call one truck a, a, a man truck, and another one was a, a female truck. And it's got all the technicolor and colors on it. So it's a tranny racing again. What the fuck? What is people thinking? Who, who are these CEOs? And who he owns these companies? What the fuck? Are they completely lost their mind? Now, I don't give a fuck who's straight and who's gay and who is doing what. I don't care. Everybody can do whatever, whatever the fuck they want to do. But you, when you're involving kids, or when you're going to sp sponsor all kinds of fucking money, f for what? what is, why would Target do this? Why would Ford do this? Why would big-ass companies like that do this? Who, who, who's putting that much pressure on them? They can't think that, what do they want for 400,000 trannies to buy trucks like that? How does, this, the, how does the commercial even make any kind of sense? Or do they want the whole country to be gay? All right, even if they want that, fuck it, do it. But leave kids alone. Now, I watched the thing with DeSantis. I haven't opened my mouth about the elections. Uh, this guy, he's fighting Disney World because of this. I give this guy a lot of credit. You want to try to take on Disney, he's a monster corporation. And he's fighting them for that. And, and he's fighting now. He did something with doctors and said, in Florida, if you, I forgot the actual words he said, but in other words, if you amputate or do cut or do anything, to children, I don't give a fuck if you have their parents' consent. You're gonna lose your license in this state, and I'm gonna see if I can put you in jail. Bro, this is a guy that we need to really, really look at him and consider him as presidential, who should be the president. Now, I did give a peek this morning. He went to a heavyweight college, and graduated. Then he went to Harvard and graduated. He went into the Navy. He was an officer. I didn't know all of that. I mean, the guy has got a history and a background that's phenomenal. And I do know, because I got a lot of friends and family in Florida. Patrick is there. And everybody's raving about what he did in Florida. What else is the guy going to do? He's good looking. He's young. He's got a beautiful wife who's very aggressive as well. He's got two beautiful daughters and a son. Harvard degree, every fucking thing you could possibly need or want. So why wouldn't we want and somebody who's ready to take on all this bullshit? Why would we would we want four more years? And I see people applauding four more years of Biden? What the fuck? What do we really lose our mind in this country? And while you're laughing and talking or doing nothing, don't fucking cry when it's too late and it's over. 
Oh, this can't happen. Bullshit. Venezuela. That can't happen. I watch people with fucking buckets to get food in the street in Venezuela. Venezuela was one of the richest countries around. They got oil up the wazoo. Don't think it can't happen. It is happening. They want to take away cash. Things that they want to do. How long is Biden in? How much fucking fentanyl is running through this border? And people, every state is fested. I never see them out even out here. I never seen so many homeless people. I never did here. I'm here fucking five years. I was here before I went away. I never seen it like this. Now, we lost over 100,000 last time I, I got a count. I'm sure the number's higher from fentanyl and overdose deaths. Do we think, do we think Trump would do nothing? Do we think DeSantis would do nothing? Fucking ain't wrong, if that's what you think. Fucking Trump was so fucking crazy, I think he might have bombed fucking China. And maybe that's what the fuck you need. Either that or we lose fucking 100,000 or 200,000 kids. Carrie Lake has a big platform about that. She's a beast. She's a beast. I don't know how she didn't become the governor. I think they're rigging elections. She t talks beautiful. She's great. I don't know how she didn't win this election. The other one's a fucking mama Luke. Uh, and now I think she's going to run as a senator. And as soon as somebody's going to run, you see the news media, everybody jumps on them to go. You know why, bro? I'm going to tell you why. As a gangster, gangster to gangster, I'm talking to you gangsters out there, women and men, because they're afraid of them. They're afraid of the truth. They're afraid of people who care about people. They want people in there who care about themselves, the liberal elite and the money. We're goats. We're nothing to them. All of us. I'm going to especially talk to you Democrats. Don't clap for them because you're a Democrat. Wake the fuck up. I don't care what you are. And, 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 and get somebody else. I don't care what he is, an independent, a Republican, anybody. So, well, you know, we got to start getting on. If you think I'm mounting off a little bit now, I wait until I get on uh, on uh, my website. Well, you're getting a lot of good fee feedback in your um, chat. There's a lot of comments flying, just agreeing with you and a su sending super chat envelopes and um, telling you to preach. Sammy, preach. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach what I need you guys to do. I'm going to preach. I need you to come on ourthing.tv. Not for fucking money for four ninety nine a month. So I could preach and I have some backing. Without backing, I'm nothing to them. If I have backing, a hundred thousand, two hundred five a million, two million, three million, five million, see how much they start to worry about me preaching. That's what happened with that kid Andrew Tate. They put him, they shelved him all, all over the fucking place. I listened to him purposely. Why did they sho sho shelve him? Why did they knock him all out, all over the place? He tells the fucking truth. He tells it like it is. So I need you guys to come on and join and, and, and start a movement with me in these areas and these places. And I'll, I'll go out and preach and talk. I'll fight. I'm 78. I'll fight until the fucking day I'm dead. So come on with me. Give me some strength. I need you. You need me to talk? You need me to fight? I'm okay. I'm ready. I need you to come and help me fight. If I turn around and I say, listen, I'm going to go by a Target store over here. I'll give you where the fuck I'm going. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock in the morning. Would some of you come down and march with me? 
or I'll stand there like a fucking idiot with a sign in, in front of my face. And I'll probably get arrested. But if there's 50 of you or 20 or 30 or 100 of you with me, then we'll say something to them. It'll reach Target's ears, whoever the fuck is up on top. We can do that. I'll, I'll go to the veterans' place, and I'll, tell, I'll talk to veterans. I'll tell them, bro, every time we were asked to do something, we were there. I'm coming to you guys. I need your help. This is another war. Not with guns, not with knives, not with killing people. I need you to come and walk with me. I don't care if you're in wheelchairs. I don't care how you get there, what you do. Come and walk with me. Give me that kind of strength. I'll show you what the fuck I'll do. And we'll do it together. Together is the point. I, if I wasn't on parole right now, I would try to, I would try to take over the independent party. I had that in my mind a couple of times. I'd like to go there and ask for a vote, put my name in there and, and take over the independent party. I'll change the name. The Independent People's Party for openness. And I'll look for people who are gonna run for Senate or Congress or whatever, and we'll back them. We'll back people who have our life in their hands and will care about us and will answer to us. Not the fucking Democrats or the Republicans. They got all these bullshit, sneak-ass deals. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some good Republicans and some good Democrats. But a good part of all these fucking people it, listen, we give them tons and tons of money. I just saw another thing with uh, Ukraine. M money and equipment, the number is up to 200 billion fucking dollars. We don't want to stop this war. It's, we're giving them 200 billion dollars. Could they win the war? Fuck no. They'll never beat Russia. So why is it being done? Whose pockets are being lined with the 200 billion? The guy was a fucking comedian when he became the president of that country. He's got a house, I understand. Now I'm answered in Italy, one in the United States, one in another country, I forgot what country. I said, oh, are, we, are we fucking this stupid? And he's a hero? He's killing his own people. They're dying in, in the streets. He's telling us, help me because I want to be in the... You know, fuck you. Give up. If you love your people, give up, you fucking bum. Give up. Surrender. Stop the fighting. Save your people. And leave, your, leave the fucking country. You're a dick anyway. It's a joke. I can't believe I'm living through this. I really can't. Well, and we're training them, too. We're giving them the F-16s, and then we're going to go teach them all of our secrets and military tactics, and all. it's like, what are we doing? Right, and, 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 oh, and how do you think Russia, Putin, and Russia thinks about us now? By this time, they can't stomach us. Oh, this is a great president. It's good for, you know, we're out there. Why do we want Russia the biggest nuclear power in the world to hate us. And they're like this with China. China, the money, they're taking it over. Brazil went to them today. One country after the other. Our money is going to be worthless worldwide. I don't think you people understand what it is. I barely understand it, not because I know it, but I'm, I'm talking to other people. What does this mean? It means that we could wind up like Venezuela. And they'll say, oh, Sammy just lost his mind. We're going we're gonna to be like a third world country? That's impossible. You know, I'd like to have a fucking penny for every time somebody said it, that's impossible. We're going to drive a ship around the world. Ah, the, water, the, the world is flat. You can't do it. We did it. 
We're going to fly. That's ridiculous. We're going to drive a car. We had horses and buggies. That's stupid. Everything is stupid. But all of those things happened. And you don't think we could... Want, how the fuck did Venezuela wind up with bad people running the country, robbing the country? And if you don't think we can wind up like that, then, bro, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I, I don't know what else to say. I know that I speak with Michael Franchis. Every guy was a fucking gangster. Got a little bit of gangster in their ass. Understands this. Dominic. I talked to Dominic. Hey, Dom, Dom. He says, Sammy, how come they don't see it? The fuck do I know why they can't see it? They're blind. They're blind. I, I don't know why. They were throwing the governor out of California. So they put it to a thing to throw him out. He won, hands down, by a landslide. The guy destroyed that state. And they vote him back in, because he's a Democrat. I, I, I don't even know how to answer that. What do, you, what do you say to them, to the people in California? What do, you, what do you say to them? Why would you vote this guy back in like that? The whole country's falling apart. San Francisco, they said, it's, I've seen film of it. I went there years ago. It was beautiful. It's a shithole. A complete shithole. With crime through the roof. And you would vote this guy back in. I don't know. Maybe I'm on drugs, but I'm going to light up another fucking cigar. I'm not on drugs, but I don't know. Maybe people are on drugs. Or maybe we're so beat up and so... I don't know what the fuck it is. People are good people. There's, there's, there's a lot of people. Even some people I don't even like. I, they're, they're people. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Press likes, press plus subscribe. Join, join me on Sammy the Bulldog TV. Join me. I'm sure you're gonna love it. I'm gonna break my ass to do everything I can to make you love it. And I'm gonna talk like this and then some. And sometimes maybe we'll make a wave or two. So we could be heard. If the, if the votes are rigged and this is rigged, then we don't have a voice. But they can't stop our voice totally. They gotta shoot us down in the fucking street. And good, I, I'll take a bullet, kill me in the street. But that may cause a fucking revolution. Because you gotta know that after I'm dead, you're next. And your son and your daughter are next. Your children are next. Your grandchildren are next. Yeah, everyone's agreeing with you, Sammy, in the chat, how everything is just rigged. Um, Tony Koresh, it's rigged, but we still don't, but we do still have a voice. Yes, mm -hmm. and we can apply that voice starting through me. I know, uh, I mean, if I do that, I know I can get some people who have channels and stuff who would agree with me. Hey, listen, Patrick Big David's talking about it all the time, too. I give him credit. He's got a big following. He don't shut up. He's talking about it. He's talking about a lot of these things all the time. And he, you know, I did a, 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 my first interview with him. I did when I came out and... Uh, and then I did the Mafia States of America with him, and he's a friend of mine. Him and Mario, good people, good people. And now he's trying to open up a new station, I think, and, and good, good. I, I, I would back him. Good, good man. I've had nothing but good things uh, to say about him. I wish he'd give me a couple hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> he's got so much fucking money. <laughs> yeah, he's cool. They, they say great things about you, Sammy. Very, very smart people. Actually. I mean, you deal with class acts all the way. Yeah, yeah. How many likes are we at, Ricardo? Uh, just under 600. Just under 600, and there is 882 in the chat. There's one. 534. <laughs> 534. <clears throat> Young Sav, thank you for the super chat. He just subscribed to your site. <clears throat> thank you. Pardon young me. Young Chat? Young Sav, like Savage? Young, young Sav? Young Sav. 
treat me like a fool. <laughs> gaba gaba goo. With that fucking Elvis Presley thing. Watch, now, there's so many girls who loved him. They're probably going to hate me. Then he died. Then when he died, he died a little later. He was on drugs and everything. Got very heavy. I think he exploded. Did yeah, his colon. I think he. I think he died on the toilet or something. Like had a heart attack on the toilet or something. Man, I, yeah, because he got <laughs> real big, bro. And he must have one good fart. They blew that fucking Ooh. bowl. <laughs> Didn't he used to eat like uh, bananas and peanut butter sandwiches all day long? I don't know God what bless. the fuck he ate. I mean, he whatever he was eating, he was eating a lot. I know that much. I mean, he was a good-looking guy. He had a good voice. And then and I think he went a little haywire. He, was, he got onto drugs, went a little haywire. He was singing on the stage and sweating, and he was fucking face was this big. I mean, he, you know, he, I don't know what happened to him. He got uh, fucked up. That's southern food. It's no joke. Yeah. <clears throat> and what didn't, what didn't he have? Where did he come from again? What was that town? Tennessee? Or, uh, no. Huh? Louisiana? Memphis. Memphis. Yeah, he had the Thank Memphis. Thank you, Jordan. Then he called it, he had the Memphis Mafia. The Memphis Mafia. I don't know who the fuck they were. I never even heard the Memphis Mafia. And and they had all that Technicolor clothes. Why? <laughs> I don't know who they were. Michael Ferrer, I see you in the super chat. Thank you so much. Samantha McCall in the super chat. I'm on your side, Sammy. Mr. Potato Head is what I call Biden. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, listen, I know a lot of you guys are on my side. And, and not only on my side, you're on your own side. You care about your wife or husband, children, grandchildren, whatever it is. I, I know you care. It's a matter of us pulling together a little bit. That's why I'm doing this. Our thing, dot TV. We pull together. We become one voice. I'm not Trump. Trump wants to do everything. I could do it. I could do it. I can't do it alone. If we can do it together, we could become a voice. It's loud. I can only scream so much. But if there's 300 people screaming, it makes a big difference. If there's 3,000 people screaming, it makes a lot better. 300,000 people or 3 million people screaming, it starts to change things around. So... And, and, and that's my and that's my goal. And if I could leave this life trying to save the country, I was in the military once, you know, uh, and I, I love the country. I do love the country. I mean, I did every fucking up thing in the world. I went to prison, I came out, I got a chance. I went back to prison like a schmuck. Never gonna do that again. And I got another chance, and I'm talking more good people, Warden Hood, so many fucking agents and people. They're not my enemy. Not anymore. I start to realize they were never my enemy. I'm my own, my own worst enemy. That's the thing with people. When we start to blame everybody, it's his fault, it's her fault, it's that one's fault. No, it was my fucking fault. I was my worst enemy. I should have quit and walked away a long time ago. But not that I resent the mafia. I don't. I idolize it. I, I resent the people who went completely haywire in it, like Roy DeMeo and people like that. <laughs> There's a limit. Army Collector 2156 in the super chat. Sammy is speaking all the facts. Well, I'm, try I'm trying, my friend. I really am. You know, I got it up to here with all that bullshit. So, uh, so I'm, I'm going to let everybody take a break from me now. But uh, hop on, do the likes, do everything. I appreciate everything you're doing. They like your Be shirt, too. And Betty Ann, if, if you meet me, there's no biting. and, and <laughs> <laughs> Just a little nibble. Just a little nibble you could take. But... And don't rough me up. I'm 78, bro. If you, <laughs> be calm. We need him left in good condition, <laughs> Betty Ann. <laughs> I, I love her. She's good. She's good. You know, I, I do talk. I talked with her on the phone once, and um, she's a typical Italian woman. You know, really, she jokes a lot. So, and she's great to talk to. Really great to talk to. Um, we got one more chat we really want to give you this one Andrew Lewinsky any advice for dealing with a man that dies in your arms he passed away at 504 yesterday 
Wow. I, I really don't know. I, is he your husband? Is he your dad? I, I don't know what he is, and I don't know if that even matters, or is he your son? Um, the advice I could give you is that if they were sick and they were suffering, they're in a better place. They're not suffering any, anymore. That should give you some sort of pleasure. And uh, the last minutes of their life, whoever it was, it was a stranger in a motorcycle accident. Yeah, he was helping him, and he was a stranger, but he was helping him in the motorcycle accident. Good. Then you know him. You know him. He knew you. The last moments of his life, you were in, he was in your arms. He'll love you, no matter where he is. That, that's rough. All of that stuff is rough. I don't care if he's related to you, worse if he's related to you, but if he's not... I never want to see a person laying in the street, dying or hurt. I would run to them immediately. I do. I would. I don't. I wouldn't even hesitate. But uh, it's not a good thing to have somebody die in your arms. I brought my daughter. My wife's. My daughter's dog got sick and died. It was 14 years old. Ozzy, a pit bull. And when the doctor said he lost all his muscle mass, he's, he's done, Sammy. I know you want to take him home, but he's done. So I, went, I laid down on the floor, and I told him, Ozzy, come here. And he laid on me. He was big. Ozzy was a big dog, heavy. Laid on my chest. The doctor took his leg, put the injection in his leg, and he just <clears throat> instantly just like putty laid on top of me. I could only imagine what you felt with a human in, in your arms. I know how I felt with Ozzy in my arms. It left an impression on me. But as soon as I got up, I knew I did the right thing. He was tripping, a dog tripping when he walks. Couldn't even walk right no more. Lost all his muscle. I would have liked him to be home. For me. But for him, he had enough. This guy is hurt. He's dying. He had enough. He passed away in your arms. You did everything humanly possible. Better than doctors or anybody else. You showed him a little bit of love before he passed by holding him and hugging him. That's a beautiful thing, my friend, whoever you are. Um, be proud of that. Not only be proud of it, leave it as a good memory. Things like that happen to you. God puts that, makes things like that happen. And you'll be a better person from here on out. You're not going to fall apart. You're not going to do anything. You did what you could do, what God would want you to do, what I would want you to do for me. If I was laying like that and somebody grabbed me, I didn't know them from Adam, and showed me a minute, a second, whatever it is, of love, boy, oh, boy, that, that's, that's incredible. That's incredible. He said, so, love you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, feel good about yourself. Feel proud. This is not, it do doesn't matter who knows it, who don't know it. You could look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. And you did the right thing, bro. Look at yourself. Don't look at me. Listen to me. Look at yourself in the mirror. You did a beautiful, beautiful thing. And God bless you. That was great, Sammy. Thank right. you. Uh, we, we might as well end it now. Can right? I give you one more from Betty Ann? Yes. Absolutely. She said she's got a nickname, too. What? The Barracuda. <laughs> <laughs> Barracuda? <laughs> I can't wait to meet her. I'm going to go for coffee. I, I think it's going to be like a wrestling match. Easy, baby. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> But she was, I, I love the way she talks. And see, like, now, she's got a sense of humor, the Barracuda. So that, that's cool. Awesome. All right, uh, Betty Ann and everybody else. I'm going to wrap it up because somebody's going to throw something at me. They're going like this again. I think they're going <laughs> to throw the something. Wind up. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Um, all right, adios, motherfuckers.